Welcome to the Natural Super Kids Podcast, where you will discover practical strategies to inspire you to boost the health and nutrition of your kids. I'm Jessica Donovan, a qualified naturopath specializing in kids' health, and I want to make it as easy as possible for you to raise healthy and happy kids. Let's get into it. Hey, hey, welcome back to the Natural Super Kids podcast. I am honored that you're choosing to spend your time with me and my special guest today in your ears. And I think you're going to love this conversation. Uh, Today, we're focusing on strong willed children, parenting strong willed children. And my special guest is Eleanor Mann from The Reconnected, who is just a bundle of wisdom when it comes to parenting. Um, and strong-willed children in particular. I learned so much from this conversation, and I know you will too. Eleanor shares a story of how the moment that she knew she had a strong-willed child, and she shares a really amazing piece of information that 20% um, of children, these are the strong-willed children, have a high need for autonomy. And I just found that really fascinating. And that is kind of what leads Leads them to be strong willed. But as parents, if we can understand this and feel that need, then there can be less friction in our homes, um, you know, as there often is when we are parenting strong willed kids. So we talk about the strong willed children, but we also talk about how to look after yourself when you have strong willed children. And I think this episode is coming out at a great time where. Kids are going on break from school and kindy and preschool. And as families, we do tend to spend more time together over the Christmas period and uh, in January as well. So I'm thrilled to bring you this conversation and I want to introduce you to Eleanor. Hello, Eleanor. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast today. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, well, I'd love for you to um, introduce yourself to the Natural Super Kids audience and tell us a bit about what you do and how you came to be doing what you're doing today. Amazing. Uh, So, well, my name's Eleanor Mann and I founded alongside with New Earth Mama, Emma, uh, a movement called The Reconnected, which at its core is um, built around the Reconnected Parenting Program. Um, which is a really beautiful blend of play therapy, breath work, and um, really born of um, Emma and my connection around conscious parenting, um, doing things differently, taking the road less travelled with our kids and with our family and in our lives, but um, actually having the tools and the space to be able to really embody what it means to do things differently from the way that we were parented ourselves. And um, so my journey to being here is that I've been working for about, it's probably 12 12 or 13 years now every time I do a podcast I have to readjust the time yes. of my <laughs> mind because it's a long it's longer than 10 years now. Uh, but I've worked for many years in a small NGO as a play therapist and counsellor with families and um, that brought me so much joy and kind of maybe 2018 I just started to get a really strong feeling like I wanted the work that was happening in the play therapy room to just kind of get flung out into the world. Yeah, and one of the things that's beautiful about play therapy is um, therapy is actually a last resort and wherever possible it's far more effective. The evidence shows that parents be shown the skills and tools that play therapists are using to connect with their kids through play. Um, It's more effective, it's more sustainable, and so... In, at the Reconnected, we teach parents how to do play therapy, but we also give them uh, ways of using their breath to kind of do that reparenting work and, yeah, basically have something to help them with the day-to-day grind that parenting is in 2021. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And I so relate to that kind of wanting to wanting to fling what's happening in the therapy room out into the world because that's exactly how I felt as a as a naturopath. You know, you're getting all of these great transformations and you want the world to know about it. Hey. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's really cool. So today we um, we thought we'd focus in on strong-willed children because I think, um, yeah, there's lots of people that listen that would really resonate and get a lot of value out of this. So how would you describe a strong-willed child? Like how would we know that we have a strong-willed child? Well, you know, for me, I knew I had a strong-willed child once my second child was born and I was in a news agency with him and he was about two years old, kind of that typical strong-willed age where most kids are kind of pushing up against something. And he wanted to buy a Spider-Man sleeping bag. Like this memory stands out in my mind so strongly. And he, he asked if he could buy it and I said no. And he said, oh, okay, I'll put it back. Maybe some other time he put it down. And at the time, the times, my second child, I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? <laughs> this is like something I have never even heard of because my eldest daughter was the polar opposite. Like there was nothing that I could offer her or every, every interaction was like a headbutting interaction between me and her. And I didn't really know that she was particularly strong-willed I actually genuinely felt like all those things that parents feel it's all about me I'm doing this wrong I can't do this parenting thing you know I feel guilty you know I must be I must need to try this I must need to try that if I get this right so it actually wasn't until I had a um a child with very different needs uh that I recognized that there was actually there's the dynamic between me and my kids, but there's also my child's unique characteristics. And there is actually a percentage. There's a psychologist in the Australia called Dr. Louise Porter. She's an incredible woman, highly recommend her work. And she did some really interesting research quite a long time ago now and found that about 20% of kids have a high need for autonomy. And they actually need to be in charge of themselves and they need to make their own decisions about what happens around them to them etc and they need it this is the bit that's tricky they need it more than they need to belong to us and so yeah and so most of the, most children 80% say but um yeah, the vast majority of people will like their need to be themselves, their relationship with you will trump that. Gabor Mate says the same thing actually. He has a really beautiful saying that um if auth- if authenticity trumps attachment, attachment will trump authenticity. But for strong willed kids it's not the case. They actually cannot um defer from that need to make the decision and to be in their autonomy. And so they present a really unique challenge because, like I was feeling, they 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 have parents really questioning themselves um, because traditional ways of parenting literally do not work with these strong-willed kids. Like they, they will not work. Um, threats punishments, ignoring, go to your room, I said now, you know, all of it escalating. It it just doesn't affect them. They they have to stay on their own path to self. So there's a lot to be there's a big gift in that, but to challenge as um the par- the challenge is as parents is the parent parenting them. That the kids that are gonna grow up and become incredible leaders in the world but that, you know, incredibly challenging to parent. Yes. And, you know, I just thought then, you know, the majority, the vast majority of the parenting books and courses and things that we, that we kind of learn from in our parenting journey would be based on that, that 80%. So yeah, that's why it is also so challenging and why we probably question ourselves so much if we do have one of those 
strong-willed willed children. Wow, that's really incredible and has given me lots of insights already. So what are some of the, the important things that mums or parents need to understand about strong-willed children? Yeah, well, you know, the saying, I think always going to the bigger picture is a really helpful thing. They really, all of these um, characteristics and traits that are, are superpowers and will serve them and their communities when they're adults. And I, I think what's inside of most parents is they want to parent them and they're aware that they don't want to break their kid's spirit. They're aware of this and they don't want to parent them in a, they don't want to overpower their strong will but it can feel like there's no alternative. Yeah. Yeah. Because Especially in the to- busy, hectic lives that we lead. Yeah. Right? There's no time for no. all of that. <laughs> no. And so um, at in our, um, we, we go in depth in this and there's, you know, um, there's a lot to be said around what are the underlying needs of a strong-willed kid. And there's quite a few, there's a few different reasons why children might be strong-willed. Um, and all children will have a different kind of unique synergy of what, what the needs are. Some are sensory needs, some are kind of relational needs, some are, have that strong-willed character. But broadly, I think often if we can just simply take the pressure off of ourselves in the moment, I think the, the, the main thing that makes a difference for parents is just knowing that it is hard to parent a strong-willed child and there is actually nothing wrong with you as a parent. And I think in the moment where you are um, butting heads with a strong-willed kid, there's actually a lot of noise inside of us like, why are they doing this? Um, they shouldn't be like this. Um, you know, what's wrong with me? Why don't they just listen to me? Um, I feel tired. I'm exhausted. I can't do this. You know, so we get really noisy inside our minds and the interactions with our children then become, you know, they're not very, they're not present. So very often just simply having that perspective shift of, oh, my child has a need at the moment, um, can dramatically shift that interaction. So we try at the Reconnected before we go into doing and strategy, if we change our perspective of this situation, how will this situation change? Because sometimes just having that perspective shift can free up the situation between us and our kids in those moments. But on a really practical level for the people who I know you're like, yeah, but what do I do? (laughs) Um, It is where can they have choices? How can you fill up your child's genuine need to be in charge of themselves? So for my little one, um, we used to share a fence with the local public school. We lived in a really small little town. And from my balcony, I could see the the um the school equipment so when she was about six or seven years old if we were having a really challenging day the solution I all I knew always was she could take a little picnic and she could go and by herself and do some playing on the equipment but with no adults and for her it was like well like I'm I'm like fully in charge of myself. Strong old kids will will always want to do something that you don't quite feel comfortable with, you know? There are the ones who want to they want to do things independently way before you're ready for them to do those things. So if you can find safe ways to foster that leadership and independence, like for my daughter, if I allowed her to do that and we kept it like the mm, I don't know, you know, I don't know. It's you know you need an adult with you and no no I can you know just kind of letting them letting it be like a big deal and then allowing them to do something that stretches your boundary and allows them to have their um that that satiated whilst keeping them safe because then of course I'm just actually staring at her from my fence you know making sure she's all right um she would then come back with her cup filled for at least a couple of hours. So if our day was kind of going into that head budding, 
Because a, a strong-willed child with their autonomy needs met is, ben, is a benevolent leader. They want to contribute. They want to help. You know, they want to, they're generous, kind. We all know that about our kids. It's when they really, if they're not having their needs met or if they're having to, like, school can be challenging for strong-willed kids because they have to do what they're told all the time, all day, you know, and bend to their wills. It's actually really hard for them some of them might not even be able to do it there you know um so coming home and just allowing them to lead and lead for an hour you know what would you like to do now um you're in charge of what we do which way should we drive home like where can you give these kids the opportunity to determine um what's happening for them um yeah. Yeah, that's such great advice. It's almost like filling filling their need, like finding ways to fill their need for that autonomy um rather than them having to fight for it all the time. And yep. I love those examples that you just gave. I think that's really helpful. Um and so what about, you know, general support for our strong-willed kids have you got any tips there maybe you know in the in the moment of them having a bit of a a meltdown or that a challenging sort of time with them what are some things that we can do in in that moment yeah so one of the things that if you remember um, when I was describing a strong-willed child um, they're authentic over their need to belong so one of the things that they recognize in adults is authenticity and one of the things they um respect often is um authenticity <laughs> and so very often if we can actually be real with them about our struggles which is very different from um being unsafe with our emotion you know being um which is kind of where we go when we go into the budding heads and they won't do what we say and we can't find a way to make them do what we say you know it's really hard to then stay calm and cool um you know it kind of feels unsafe to us and it feels unsafe to everyone sometimes and so if we can be real with them early on about what we need put our needs into the mix and put um uh express ourselves in a realistic way about how we we're feeling emotionally simple things like naming our own emotions i'm really frustrated i have to be at work in 15 minutes this means this and this and this kids don't have that information in their mind necessarily when we often just assume don't we, that, you know we yeah. need to get, they, that they know we need to get out of the house within 15 minutes and, and then why we get that would be yeah yes yeah, yeah. yeah and how we're feeling and all of those things to be honest, a strong-willed child is just feeling bossed around and they're not really um, thinking about any of those things. So if we can give them that information and we can be authentic about how we are feeling because it's really valuable for kids who are going to be leaders, who are leaders, to be able to recognise and understand their impact on other people. So. When we name our own emotions in a situation, um, we're giving them that, we're beginning that self-awareness training, you know. It's grounded in reality. Like you you impact people when you, if you refuse to put your shoes on and mum's ready for for work, you know, mum's going to get really stressed. It's just not realistic for it to be any other way, you know. So just giving them that information. It doesn't happen all the time, but for a child who has um, their autonomy needs already met enough, sometimes just having an authentic, respectful interaction like that will bring that benevolent leader out into them. Okay, you know, you'll often see them go into, okay, you know, I'll, you know, and they'll, they'll lead the interaction of, how can we get out of the house in time for this person? Not all the time. What tends to happen with with kids who are strong-willed is by the time parents are looking for help with their strong-willed kids, they've really reached burnout <laughs> and they're, they're feeling like, you know, you know, how am I going to get through this kid's entire 
childhood, you know. When there are only three. <laughs> there are three and like how am I going to do this? And there are already three. They're three and they're doing this. So imagine when they're going to be this and, you know, and the fatigue is real and et cetera. And so that's kind of where we actually really need our to be making sure that we're taking care of ourselves, building up our own reservoir of of um, of energy. But also um, one of the things we do at The Reconnect is working through the resentment and frustrations that we end up very with pent up that we have towards our children, which is a difficult thing to acknowledge. But when you live with a strong-willed child, you will know full well what I'm talking about. Because when there's one person in the family system who you know, refuses to go to bed or, you know, everyone wants to do something. There's one person who's, you know, creating the waves. Always sort of creating that friction. Yeah. Yeah. It's really easy for them to become uh, the scapegoat and it's really easy for us to have unacknowledged, unexpressed, you know, grief sometimes, frustration, um, rage. And it's really important as parents that we just get real about those feelings, not have shame around them. Them. I think mothers were expected to just be serenity, you know, or calm or something like this when in actual fact it's um, the biggest emotional roller coaster any of us will ever go on having children. And, yeah, and so, yeah, a lot of the work we do at The Reconnected is is focused on that emotional healing recharge that we, we just need, especially if we're going to show up for these kids the way we want to because I think for the parent of the strong-willed child um the hardest part is going to bed feeling like you haven't served your children and been the parent the way that you wanted to be and these kids will kind of um push us push us to 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 feel the more challenging feelings more than the child with the belonging needs who wants us to um be loving and appreciative towards them. So we'll elicit those behaviours from us. But the strong-willed child just doesn't, they don't care. They don't care about that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad that you brought that up because, um, yeah, I was going to ask about that because I think, you know, parenting in general, no matter what our kids are like, is challenging. Um, But parenting a strong-willed child is even more challenging and it can, you know, it can really break a family, can't it, and parents and um, lead to all of those emotions that you said, the guilt, the the shame, the frustration. Um, And so, yeah, filling up our own cup as parents um, so that we can respond more patiently um, is really important. So, yeah, any, any other practical tips you have for parents? parents like specifically to look after themselves in this sort of situation yeah look I think the one thing that most parents struggle with that I think is the answer to everything which sounds counterintuitive but it's um the modern day parent does not have the space they need to fill their own cup (laughs) and I mean we're just coming out of the two years of lockdown you know so that has then the pressure is just on on a whole nother level. But so how can you take space? Is there a way that you can take space? And um, sometimes if we are creative, we manage to find ways. When my kids, I had my children um, at one stage, I had four kids who were aged five and under. They were all toddlers. Two of them are strong-willed. <laughs> I know. I often wow. say, like thank God for my non-strong-willed children, just purely because of the, you know, the smoothness that they bring to the, you know, even though, oh, the things that strong-willed kids are able to achieve is so inspiring. That commitment to self, anyway. Um, so one of the things I used to do to get that space for myself was. I would put them all into a two-kid jogger and I would put my headphones in and I would just go for a walk. And I could see that they were good, but I couldn't hear anything. I kept my eyes on the horizon, you know, and I just moved my body and breathed deeply. And for a period of time that was largely the, the time and space that I got away 
from my children. Yeah, and that's <laughs> such a great point because, I mean, I've got older kids now. They're 11 and mm. almost 14. So it's kind of a distant memory when yeah. you just don't have any space to yourself. But there's so many parents that would be listening that just don't have that ability to get any space. So finding those creative ways of, of feeling like you've had space with the kids around is so important, isn't it? Yep, yep, yep. A hundred percent. Um, yeah. And I think we can carry guilt about that even like needing to have space for, from our kids. Sometimes parents even feel guilty about that. Um, but you know, it's, it's really essential. Yeah. And even more essential if you've got these, these strong willed children that we're, we're talking about today for sure. And it's something we've talked a, a bit about on the podcast before is that, you know, mum guilt and, um, and sort of how to, how to overcome that and that wanting space for yourself and taking space for yourself is, as you said, essential. Um, and for me, I know I find that when I've had that space to myself, I'm so much, I'm such a better mum, you know, I'm so much more patient. I'm, you know, I think about things before I respond and we have, you know, so much richer interactions and connections. So for it's those mums so who are better for everybody. Oh, yes. And so for those mums thinking I, like that, it, that it's feeling guilty about taking time for themselves, like just know that it does make you a better mum. Like that flow on effect for your kids is huge, isn't it? It's yeah, it's massive. Yeah. So um, thank you. I think you've shared so many helpful tips um, in just this very short conversation today. Um, and so can you tell people where they can find out more about you and, and what you guys offer over at The Reconnected? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so really the best place to connect with us and the community is on our Instagram page, which is the underscore reconnected. It's a really vibrant community there and we have a lot of great conversations. Um, at the moment, uh, we do have a course on strong-willed children and we have a course coming out in 2022 on the sensitive child, which is those children who have a um, almost the opposite uh, perspective from a strong-willed child who the strong-willed child pushes but the sensitive child retreats from. and. Um, when I say sensitive, strong with kids are highly sensitive to their environment. It's more that um, the their reaction is of a sensitive kind of nature. Um, and uh, aside from that, we have the Reconnected Parenting Program, which is just incredible. Um, I'm, actually, I'm so proud. We have... Um, a group of parents working through week one at the moment. And um, every time I see families re connecting with the work and, you know, it's, it really is a place to, to actually do the work. We don't, we talk about the theory and the, you know, all of the things like what we've discussed today, but it, this is a place to actually do the work, to really drop the emotions, to really come in closer with our kids and to learn how to understand them better. So. Um, yeah, those are kind of our the few offerings that we have going at the moment. Yeah, wow, sounds amazing. And I love that you just said, you know, you actually do the work because learning learning about this stuff is one thing, but actually implementing it and being consistent with it oh, yeah. is another thing altogether. Eh? Oh. So, <laughs> so awesome. great that you've like created these places, these safe places for parents to be able to do that work. Um, and maybe we can get you back on and to talk about That's sensitive kids at some love point to. as well. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, because there would be a lot of overlap laps with the strong willed and the sensitive but I'd be keen to hear hear more about um the, the sensitive um pro, the sensitive kids program that you've got coming out as well so yeah I'll make sure I pop all the links um in the show notes so you can go on over and and find all the links to um Eleanor's uh Instagram the reconnected and website I love your Instagram there's so much inspiration there as well so Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Head on over to our website, naturalsuperkids.com for the show notes for this episode 
as well as a whole heap of inspiration to help you raise healthy and happy kids. I'll see you next week.